happy Wednesday. Um, today we are going to be taking some notes. Um, you can find these notes under the Classwork tab on the Google Classroom. Um, they're called Notes 923. So if you open those up, again, you'll see the link for my YouTube channel to access the video to watch these notes. And then the Google slide that you will need to complete while watching. As you can see, you have the red text boxes to fill again. Um, you'll want to watch the video and look for the big, bold, blue words to fill in these red text boxes. In order to fill in the text box, you will need to click it, and then you can type in um, whatever word you need to to fill in that blank. If at any point you need to pause the video, or rewatch the video to make sure that you fill in all of these blanks, feel free to do so as you do not want to miss any of the important information. And as always, if you have any questions about anything we discuss, please email me or comment on the assignment on the Google Classroom. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we have been talking about the different sources historians use to study the past. Today we're going to look at how they actually begin to organize and analyze that information. There is a process that they use to create accounts of history. And again, historical accounts are created after the fact, including opinion and analysis from historians. And they are often used to represent historical events as we cannot recreate them. There is a four step process. The first step is framing problems to study, selecting and analyzing the available evidence, and that evidence would be the primary and secondary sources that we have discussed, organizing that information, and then finally creating an account, pulling all of it together to create a final historical account. Historians do not start examining artifacts or documents without some idea of where to start. But how do they decide what to investigate? This is part of the first step of the process, the framing the problem to study. You must begin with a problem which helps to focus our study and set limits as to what we study. As you guys know, we live in the information age where you can Google anything and you can get billions of results. So we want to make sure that when we conduct a historical study, we are being very specific so we do not get drowned in the millions of Google hits. The questions that we ask should explain what we are studying and why we are studying it. So again, giving us a clear focus, the what, and then the why, establishing why something is important, why we need to know this. When we begin researching, we should be able to fill in the following sentence. I am studying blank because I want to know blank and be able to explain blank. So for example, recently we've been talking about primary sources. You could fill this in by saying, I am studying primary sources because I want to know what they are and be able to explain how to use them. So again, you guys are already taking part in this process, but these questions need to be answered before we continue to create historical accounts. This is also why your questions need to be specific because larger topics are harder to research. For example, if you just typed in the American Revolution, you're going to get a ton of hints because that time period lasted for quite a while. And there were many events and people involved. If you are specific, say you want to specifically know about Crispus Attucks, one of the um, revolutionaries who started the American revolutions, that is much more specific and you're gonna get fewer hits and fewer pieces of information, which will ultimately make it easier for you to study. So this is an example of how you go through that process. 
I am first to identify a topic of interest. Like I mentioned, revolutions. Then you'll need to raise a question about the topic. So again, framing your problem. There are a couple of questions you could ask yourself. What is a revolution? Why do they happen? Where have they happened? Are people revolting today somewhere? Then you're gonna to wanna to go into finding that evidence, starting your research to make a more specific question. Looking at things on the internet, reading documents, textbooks, articles, asking the librarian, etc. Using those primary and secondary sources to begin your research. Then finally, you can come up with a problem that you want to specifically look at. What effect did the American Revolution have on other revolutions? That question is going to be very specific. You're going to get very specific sources that you can use to answer this question. And it will be a lot easier for you as a historian to research this topic. Historians use a variety of tools to help them frame questions and organize information. There are four tools that historians use. So once we have framed our topic and we have begun to do our research, we need to find specific pieces of evidence. These pieces of evidence, we need to determine their importance or significance how they relate to the social institutions of the time. Time, when did they take place? When were they created? And space, in what kind of area were they created and how will they help us? And we're gonna go into each of those four tools in a little more detail. Importance or significance. This depends on the problem or question being addressed. Something that is important to one person also is not going to be important to another, as it depends on the historian's prior knowledge and point of view. This area can be tricky as it might limit what information you see. It might also change the historical event as we might only hear um, the popular opinion or the popular idea as it is based on people's own perspectives and point of view. Another tool that historians use are called social institutions. These institutions are created to meet the needs of society so they can continue to exist. These institutions include food, clothing, shelter, safety, and reproduction. Time, specifically when did it happen? And space. The location under an event. Where did it happen? And using these four tools, we can begin to create accounts that will help people better understand the past and show us what really happened. That's it for the notes for today. If you need to re-watch any part of this video and make sure that you have all of the big, bold, blue words, please do that now. If you have any questions, please let me know. We will be working with these different tools over the course of the school year, um, so make sure that you are familiar with them. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later.